Hello and welcome to another episode of Movies That Make Us. I'm Jake. I'm Tracy. <laughs> and I'm Val. And today we have a special guest. Chris, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Wow. And it welcome, is, welcome. It, well, thanks for being here. Um, we are so yes. thrilled to have you on the show. Um, you're you're somewhat in the biz, as we like to say around here, right? That's still cool. People say that, right? In the biz. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing establishes credibility like asking somebody if that's what they say in the biz. <laughs> As you can clearly tell, Chris, I am not in the biz, obviously. So uh, but but we're thrilled to have you. You are a professional stuntman and actor, and you've been in a few movies that people may have heard of. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what what are some of the films that you've been in that people may may be able to go and see some of the work that you've done? Uh, Avengers, Infinity War, Endgame, Captain Marvel. Um, I'm currently working on Jurassic World right now, number three. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So those just are just a few, a few. just a few yeah, small yeah. independent films. <laughs> Some small time independent films. films. Yeah, yeah. Low budget. Low budget yeah. Film. <laughs> so you you say you're doing um, Jurassic World three right now? Is that how? How has that been in this world that we're living in now? I'm sure a lot of things have been put on hold. What does that look like um, as far as the production goes now? Well, I would like that to know that as well. I've, uh, I've been here for a week and a half, and a whole week mm -hmm. and a half, I've had to self-isolate and quarantine. Okay. Uh, so I haven't even been on set yet. Uh, Interesting. But I'm interested to see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be because I'm sure that, you know, just like any industry out there, you know, social distancing has become the norm and face coverings and things like that. And how does that work when you're on a movie set and you're shooting scenes and doing things like that? It'll be yeah. interesting, I'm sure. I think everybody changes. Everybody's interested to see how this is going to work out. This, uh, From what I hear, Jurassic World is the first major movie to get mm -hmm. going. Um, so we're all kind of the big experiment here are you guys yeah, planning on having an extended period of shooting i mean i'm, I'm guessing no. you guys will, really yeah i i but, thought maybe they'd be taking things a little slower and ramping up but you're hitting the ground no. full speed <laughs> they're pretty confident i don't know i don't know okay uh they i mean everybody here is so organized and things and uh you know i think they could happen i don't know we'll see <laughs> Well, and it seems like a lot of stuff now um, that used to have to be like on location somewhere can be done on sound stages with like CGI yeah. and green screen and things like that, which I would imagine makes it a little bit easier as far as the isolation and the quarantining and distancing part might go. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. See, I'm not in the biz, Chris, like you are. So I don't know how this works. <laughs> you fooled me, man. You fooled me. <laughs> so I want to talk about Chris for a minute before we get into all Please, the amazing sure. things that he's doing now. Chris, I met you, I think about 10 years ago. Yeah, I think I so. I think yeah. it's been it's like that long. long, 10 or maybe even a little bit longer years ago. And you were living here in Utah and you and three buddies had this little stunt man group that you were doing. Um, and you were, it was like when parkour was a big thing and you know, American think, Ninja Warrior. Yeah, that's the training, best thing to call like it too. It's a that. little stuntman group thing. Cause it, <laughs> that's, I thought it was professional <laughs> as we were. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is close. I feel like. I don't know if this is close, but as Val was describing it, I was picturing the opening to that episode of The Office where like Michael and Andy are running through and doing parkour and like jumping off stuff and like into a refrigerator box. Man. Was that pretty close? All right. This is the thing though. This is the thing though. Chris and his buddies were jumping off of like buildings and they wow. weren't like just desks. Like they were doing really big things. We, I had him um, and his crew on my show at Radio Disney and we were talking about all the great things that they were doing. And you guys were just kids. And it was so great because, you know, it was something that you felt passionate about when you were younger. And now here you are 10 plus years later and you are doing exactly what you set out to do. So let's talk about that journey really quick. Like, how did you even think about, hey, I want to be a stunt guy? You know, like, yeah. what what got you into that? Uh, well, early on, it was uh, Dragon Ball Z and Jackie Chan. And, nice. Uh, 
that's what got me to pick up the phone and be like, all right, where do I find a place that'll teach me Shaolin Kung Fu? And uh, I called up a karate studio and I was like, I'm like, I have the, this 12 year old squeaky voice and I'm like, I, do you guys do Shaolin Kung Fu? And they're like, yeah, well, we, do, <laughs> we, do, we, do, we do all the martial arts, you know? And I, I don't know anything. And uh, so I go and that's where I meet a couple of my best friends, uh, some of the friends you met. And uh, yeah, we, we basically just started watching, watching Jackie Chan and trying to emulate what they did with my friend's high eight camcorder. And uh, yeah, I kind of started from there. Awesome. Nice. And then um, tell us a little bit about American Ninja Warrior. Like that's, that's yeah. a crazy thing to even say you're, I, and it makes me exhausted saying the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long name to be yeah. fair. <laughs> but I, like um, to say you're going to do that and to train for that yeah. is crazy. Uh, I did American Ninja Warrior for three years. The first year I did, I did the best. Um, I went to finals in Vegas um, and I finished eighth. Uh, so that was cool. Um, and I didn't finish, I guess. Like nobody finished until like right. two years later, uh, but <laughs> yeah. decided that that's what I was going to do. And I just, I trained hard for it. I dropped a lot of weight and I just literally trained climbing and pull-ups and uh, I did really well. And that was the first time I ever set out to, to I, I made a huge goal that I had no idea how I was going to do it and, and made it happen. Um, and it kind of set in motion a lot of other things for me. So did you, so you did you see the show? In did I see the show? Go ahead, Val. Well, I was going to say, did you see the oh, show? And then that's what you're like, I could, I want to do that. Yeah. I mean, it just, I was like, I want to try that. That's, that seems cool. You know, and nobody I know has ever been on TV. You know, nobody I knew was part of the industry. So it just seemed like this unattainable thing, but I was like, we're going to give this a try. Like, I can't even imagine the mindset of watching American Ninja Warrior and being like, yeah, I could do that. Like, I want to try that out. Like, that is just <laughs> awesome. To me. Like, just incredible. Like, I watch it. I'm like, there's no way I would, like, anyway. Yeah, so that's cool. Couch. That's really, really cool. Cheeto dust everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so you're there. You, you you did American Ninja Warrior. You're, you're kind of doing small stunt things here in Utah. And how do you transfer from Utah to being in one of the biggest movie franchises of all time? And that's Marvel. Um, just a huge chunk of luck. Uh, I kind of started doing stunts in maybe 2012, I want to say. But it's like you said, we were just in our little stuntman group um, in 2012. And we did a lot of student films. We did a lot of local um low budget shows and that's where we got to meet a lot of some of our favorite people that we that i've ever worked with even to this day um because it was a very collaborative atmosphere and because of that they trusted us you know we became like the only stunt people in utah and they would ask us what what do you guys want to do for the action and we would think well what do we want for our reel and uh basically we could do it and mm -hmm. um and then we would have pretty good reels. And so I, I started building up a reel that way, but I never thought that it would really turn into anything. Like I always hoped, but it always in the back of my mind, I was like, well, someday I'm going to have to get a real job. And that like made me really sad to think about. And, uh, <laughs> and then so sad. Yeah, I got, I have a real uh, job and it makes me sad to yeah. think about. So, <laughs> so and then I got married in uh, 2015 and uh, we got pregnant right away. And I was living in my parents' basement. I was making probably like $1,000 a month doing stunts. Um, and then on top of that, I was an editor. I was uh, editing videos, um, kind of corporate videos, and eking out a living that way. And I realized, like, it's now or never because this baby's going to come. I'm living in my parents' basement. And after that, like, I'm, I'm going to have to have a steady paycheck. So I, I actually quit my editing job. I took out the safety net. Um, and wow. I started sending my, my reel out to everybody. Again, I still didn't know anybody in the larger Hollywood industry. I knew nobody. I had no connections. Um, but I started sending my reel out um, and just emailing people. And by that time, my reel, had, it, was, it was pretty good. 
for especially for a dude my size. I'm six three, um, I'm two twenty. You know, and so for a dude my size to be able to flip like that, like it kind of got shared around and and got some traction. And initially, I got a call, and I uh, I got a call from uh, I was driving to my car. I remember I just had a terrible night where I got pulled over uh, for like rolling through a stop sign and now i had like a couple mm. hundred dollar ticket i didn't know how i was gonna play, pay my car was like breaking down and then i get a call and it's like hi is this chris and i was like yeah this is this is chris and he's like hey i'm uh, my name is wayne i'm uh philip silvera's assistant i was like that name lit me up i was like this dude is yeah. a major stunt coordinator uh he does uh like deadpool and he's like yeah. hey we're, wow. we're getting ready to do deadpool too and uh philip would looking at you to maybe double Ryan Reynolds. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. you know, I'm like trying to act cool. Like this is just a normal phone call. Oh yeah. Me. You're like, I get these calls all the time. This is no problem. Let me check my schedule. See if I'm free, you know? Uh, but I'm freaking out. I'm like, that is, that is so rad. And, uh, and then basically they they sent me an email and they asked me to, to come up with a, a couple to basically follow these, these fights that they had sent me to film them myself, doing them with my friends and uh, send them back. And so I did them, I sent them back and then I heard nothing. And uh, oh. I would later learn that uh, there was a change of directors. And uh, so Philip was no longer stunt coordinating. So I was out and that was like, oh man. But then um, I got a, a Facebook message from another friend and it was like just this screenshot from this Facebook, it was a private Facebook group for professional stunt people. And I wasn't cool enough to be involved in it. You had to have so many people vouch for you and I couldn't get in. Uh, but somebody sent me this, this, this screenshot and it was like this person, they was looking for a 6'3 stunt person that could do Hong Kong fight beats. And I was like, hey, I could do that. And the deadline to submit was in like five minutes. And so uh, <laughs> I basically just... <laughs> Pulled together some like crappy footage, wrote out a crappy email, and sent it off. And I did not expect to hear anything because I hadn't heard anything from anybody except for Phil Severo at this point. And uh, and like a week later, I get a call or an email back from this person, uh, Monique Ganderton was her name. And uh, and she says, "Hey, uh, Sam." Uh, she was uh, the assistant stunt coordinator, Sam Hargraves, at the time on a movie called Wolf Warrior out in China. And she's like, hey, Sam loves your stuff, uh, but you look too young for what we're doing. But keep in touch. Um, keep that sending me stuff. We might be able to use it on the next one. I was like, okay, hey. I actually got a response, you know? And so <laughs> yeah. every couple of months, I would send her videos of whatever I was working on, you know, um, flipping around or doing whatever. And uh, anyway, uh, and maybe one out of five times, I would get a response. Um and uh, pretty soon they became like, hey, do you have any videos of you, you know, doing wire work? And so I would be like, yeah. And then I would go out and get my friends and like, hey, guys, I need to do some wire work. That night, you know, we'd rig up some, some wires. Always answer yes. Yes. Exactly. Even if it's yeah. no. Always and, answer uh, yes. <laughs> and so we'd put some stuff together and I sent it back. Didn't hear anything. I was like, all right, you hated it. Cool. Um. And then, uh, you know, pretty soon she said, hey, um, we, we're looking at having you potentially double one of our, our characters on this movie coming up. Um, can you get to a costume fitting at this address uh, tomorrow? And I said, yeah, the address was in <laughs> L.A. Um, at, in the, the fitting was at like noon and I'm in Utah. And I'm like, wow. yeah, I have no money. And so I think I ended up driving out there all night. Wow. And, uh, and so I got there and when I got to the, the place, it's like, it's like this nondescript warehouse building. And I can't remember like Burbank area. I go in and there's Marvel stuff everywhere. And I'm like, Oh, hello. And they lead me <laughs> back to the spitting room and they have me try on the star Lord outfit. And, uh, the, the costume ladies are looking at me and they're like, this fits perfectly. This is wow. We don't have to do any alterations. He's like, Oh, this is, this is wow. Well, this is, I think he's better than Tony. I don't know who Tony is at this point. <laughs> um, and so they are like, all right, great. Thanks. And they send me off and, uh, have no more clear instruction after that. And then after <laughs> their, maybe a week, uh, I'm home and I get a call and it's Monique. And she says, Hey, we would love to have you come and 
stunt double for for Chris Pratt on Infinity War. And I was like, hell yeah. So that's how that came about. Wow. And uh, that is awesome. Yeah. And so and then I just learned I met a bunch of people. There's there's 200 plus stunt people on that uh, on that movie. And I was going to say, like, that's a lot of yeah. people. I looked at I looked at the nomination list for because you got nominated as an ensemble yeah. for that movie. And it's like 200 people that are it's so incredible yeah. how many stunt people it takes to make these movies even with cgi even with all this stuff stunt people are so important yeah you know and for some reason i have no idea why but uh they they kept me around like i starlord didn't have that much stuff in infinity war but they right. kept me around as part of the core team and um and that basically was like a group of uh, 10 12 people um, and I was, I was literally working on Infinity War to end game back to back and all together. Wow. Um, it was a year of principal filming plus like a couple months of, of extra work after that. And, uh, I got the chance to do a bunch of Star-Lord stuff, help choreograph stuff, just be part of the team, be a bunch of different bad guys. Uh, you know, I got to <laughs> run dialogue with, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Dick Cumberbatch. Uh, wow. you, you must be, have been like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> it was crazy, the man. picture with you and Tom Holland. Come on, yeah. <laughs> so, so why jealous. am I not surprised that came out? Well, I mean, <laughs> he's listen, he nice, sent he's, the picture, he's such a nice dude. he sent the picture. I may or may not have printed it off and put it in a frame. I'm not gonna say anything about what I'm doing. Behind I may have door. photoshopped, yeah. uh, Chris out and inserted myself. I don't know how that happened. I think. I think the less you tell us about what you do with Tom Holland picks is probably the better. Val. Like if we could... I do not have a romantic feeling about Tom Holland. He's a child. No, I know. I think we know. he is we know. adorable. I think he's an adorable kid. Um, and I love the fact that he plays my favorite superhero. Now, I know we're nerding out and we're getting into um, you know, the Marvel stuff, which we are gonna do an episode specifically on Marvel because we are actually um, kicking off our month of action films because yes. July mm -hmm. is well known for the big action uh, movie and with action films come stunt men, stunt people. And it's so cool. You were in one of my favorite movies ever as a stunt guy and as an actor. And that's Creed two. And you, I didn't even recognize you. <laughs> like when you posted that you were in the movie, I'm like, wait a second. I've already seen this movie two times. I didn't see you at all. So I, le I left, I saw your post. I left and I went to the movie theater and I watched it again. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then I, think, yeah. I think I messaged you and I'm like, I just saw you. That was so awesome. You got huge for that film. That you was were big. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think you might be, you might be confusing me with Florian, uh, cause Florian is the dude that punched me out and he's huge. Well, he's also <laughs> huge. But he's yeah. also like, he's also a, it seems like he's a big teddy bear. Like he's, seems like the nicest guy in the world from I his, know, cause I follow him as like, he had this like weird confidence about him that I was like, you know, you might be part of some kind of mafia or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be just because he had to punch you out like that might have yeah. been where the confidence came from like a, like a couple posse with him and i'm like i don't know this is kind of sketch I, but that was something I, very different for you yeah uh that, that was actually the the fight coordinator from uh in, the, from well infinity war and x x games um Endgame. Endgame became the uh, stunt coordinator for Creed 2, and that's who brought me out for that one. So that was the first thing I did after Endgame, actually. Did you did you have to spend time to bulk up? Or um, were you already pretty much what they were looking for? I was pretty much what they were looking for, and I was cool. tasty from being in a, a soundstage <laughs> for a year. So <laughs> like, perfect. You look European. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> Especially <laughs> Eastern European. Like it just yeah. works. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, He's a cover. big pasty see. dude. Yeah. <laughs> He's big and pasty and muscly. That's perfect. That's just what we're looking for. Can you take a punch? Like that's all you need to know. Yeah. That's but awesome. But I mean, now you're a part of like the Rocky 
like movie episodic it's i mean how does that feel you're you got marvel over here you've got rocky over here i mean do you ever just sit back and be like how the crap did i get here <laughs> it's super weird because it's just kind of uh i mean to a lot of people it seems like i just i just arrived at, to at the top and they didn't see the years that i spent right. doing small things you know and right. so yeah. i never take a day for granted you know i uh like currently I, I get to double Chris Pratt and um, I've done five movies with him so far. And, you know, I'm always grateful for that call because I don't take it for granted. The next time, if he doesn't call me, it's not personal. Like I just, it might not happen. And right. so I'm, never, I'm grateful for every time it does. That's awesome. yeah, it doesn't hurt that you're all, oh, by the way, look like one of the biggest movie stars <laughs> in our time right I'm, now. I uh, get so and you're many really good at lucky little things <laughs> to be able to get here. It's crazy. The universe was just nudging you. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about extraction? Yes. Because that is a crazy film. And your director, it's his first time directing. He's a stunt coordinator and I'm watching these videos on his social media of the way he's shooting these scenes. Cause I watched the movie first and I'm like, wait a second. Cause as a filmmaker, I'm like, how did you even get that shot? Right. And you can tell that, that you can tell that an, um, that a different kind of director is doing this. Somebody that's done stunts because the shots in this movie and the way they follow the choreography of the fighting and under cars and over cars. And then I see him on the front of a Jeep, like following with a camera, this one shot as they go around the corner. And I'm like, okay, like you yeah. are amazing. <laughs> like, how is it to be a part of this film that I feel like is groundbreaking in a way for for action films oh definitely um well so sam uh he was my boss on infinity war he was the stunt coordinator for infinity war he became the second unit director on endgame um and and the russos you know worked with him extensively there and that's kind of how they they gained their rapport and and started talking about him directing and uh then extraction came about and so I get the call for extraction and this is Sam and his element. I mean, he's, he's a lot like me in the fact that he grew up doing this, making movies with his friends on high eight. And he is a dedicated, dedicated man. I remember on infinity war and end game, like him and a couple other crazy nut jobs would get up at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning um, so that they could work out for two to three hours before filming began. They'd work for 12 hours or so, go to bed at midnight, get up to do it again the next day. It's nuts. Wow. Like, and he did that every, every day. And then on the weekends, he would just go out, you know, into the mountains somewhere and just be lost solo hiking and come back, you know, Monday morning ready for work. The man's, he is, he is something else. And uh, an incredibly talented human in all fields. So it was really cool to get to work with him um, and, and see him as a director and see him absolutely nail it. Do you, do you think it, it, was it a different experience working with a director who had so much background knowing stunts and knowing stunt coordination? Yeah, I mean, it's also a lot of more pressure on us as stunt people. You know, nothing's as impressive to, to Sam. Because yeah. he could do it and he could do it better. <laughs> that's just that's it. <laughs> so if you have to take a heavy slam, you better you better take it heavy. You know, don't uh, don't try to catch yourself and make it look lame because he will he will put down his camera. He will walk over and show you how to do it. Just to come oh. over and pick up his camera again like that. He is he could do it. So you have to respect exactly yeah. what he says, and he has a, a a great vision for how these things should be put together. So. Um, it's definitely a different experience working for somebody who used to be a sun guy. Uh -huh. It was a wild ride of a movie. If you haven't seen it yet, um, oh, man. On Netflix, you've got to see it. It's I've watched it a couple times now. I, I would really, this is a movie I'd really like to see on the big screen. Like I hope at some mm -hmm. point, like it will, even if it's like a short release on the big screen, because it was made 
for the big screen. Like this. Action... I think there was hopes that it would be the first Netflix yeah. <laughs> uh, theater release, actually, uh, before yeah. it, it, it premiered. And I ultimately, I don't know what the decision was or why the decision was, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I think it was COVID came in and went yeah. um, to that. But <laughs> that's why I'm hoping, like, as now that theaters are open again, that maybe, like, you know, maybe we can put together a petition. I don't know, but it's yeah. a great action film. And it just the scenes are crazy. Um, but this isn't the first time that you've worked with Chris Hemsworth. I think we have a picture of you dressed up as Thor, yeah. um, which is <laughs> amazing. So, Chris, you've got to be Star-Lord. You got to be Thor. What did you do with Thor? Like, what was that so experience? So, Chris Hemsworth has a, has a stunt double that, uh, goes with him everywhere and his name is Bobby and uh, he is he's an amazing stunt person and uh, the they had already filmed the final battle for Endgame or at least the first version of it most of these things changed several times over the course sure. of filming so they had already filmed this this first go at it and um, Chris Hemsworth was committed away to Men in Black uh, so him and Bobby went and were filming that one. And then the second version of the end battle came with Captain America and Iron Man and, and Thor. And uh, basically they had me dress up as, as big Thor and, and uh, wield the hammer for that. So I was really grateful for that. Um, and uh, it was just, yeah, that was cool, but that was, it was really, really difficult. Thor's costume is not easy, and especially the fat suit costume <laughs> is not easy. Like I remember, like I remember, like nearly passing out. There's a part where Thanos like uh, picks Thor up and shuts him against a rock, and it's basically me. I jump up on a mini tramp and then jump back as hard as I can, just arms out, um, and slam into this. Uh, it's a, it's like a dense foam rock, mm -hmm. but as soon as I hit, poof, my vision starts tunneling. And I'm like, oh, oh no, oh no. Because then um, the uh, my my buddy Adam, who was playing Thanos in the uh, in the pajama suit, comes up and he has like a couple of beats of of punches to throw at me, and so I have to react to those as I'm like reaching to like call the, the hammer back to me, and I'm like passing out, and I'm like Ugh, try to react, try to react, and it slowly starts fading back in. Yeah. Oh man. Like there were probably a times where I nearly passed out because it's just it's so hot in the in there. It, it probably added to the realism of the scene. Yeah. <laughs> so, the director's so, like, that's perfect. So, basically, those that have uh, had Molnir and been able to use it, it's it's Thor, Cap, and you. Yes, and maybe Bobby. Exactly. And Bobby. Yep. <laughs> True. I've, wielded, I've actually wielded Stormbreaker and Molnir like, together, you know? That's awesome. That, that's the that part where he claps it. Yes, that's <laughs> that's you. That's the pinnacle, man. Face replacement. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So did you, you? Oh, go ahead, Tracy. I was gonna say, did you grow up on a lot of the 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 comic books and the superheroes, or was this kind of not? You, know, you were more I, into the martial arts. I loved comic books growing up, but I could never find them around me. I was in kind of a American Fork, Utah. Was a smaller place when I was growing up. Um, we had a dollar store. We had a Walmart that was too far to walk. And so I had no idea where to get them. Um, and so I didn't grow up on them, sadly enough. But th like every time I saw them, they're like these little gold nuggets. I was like, oh, but I never could find them enough to, to get into them. So that's one of my great regrets. Yeah, that was I think it was a little bit tougher. That was, you know, it's definitely a lot more mainstream. And you can find them a lot easier now. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So you mentioned that this is the fifth film that you're working on right now with Chris Pratt. And, and is that pretty typical? You mentioned like Chris Hemsworth has Bobby that goes with him and does all of the, all of his stunts. Is that typical that these actors have stunt men that they like to work with and stunt doubles that they prefer to have on set and do their, their movies uh, with them? You know, I would say at a certain level, probably, I mean, it's definitely more rare to be a dedicated stunt double or like to, to be requested by somebody. Um, but I think, you know, when you're at that level, you know, like Chris Hemsworth or Chris Pratt or these guys, and you've worked on enough movies, you you kind of get a feel for who does you the most justice or who you like best, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I guess 
that works out for me. And so. feeling <laughs> and feeling comfortable. I mean, because yeah. you know right. they're celebrities. So once you find somebody that you feel safe, comfortable with, and you trust, you know, I and think vice versa. Them around. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the well, you guys dude in the world. So I'm just I like I really lucked out looking a lot like see, him. You guys probably have a shorthand <laughs> together now, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Just because you know each other, you've got that familiarity. You've worked yeah. together before. Yeah. So what was the moment on any of the movies that you were on, that one moment where you were hanging out and you had a moment to like look around and take it all in and say like, okay, like I'm here. Did, did you have that moment on one of the films where you were able to just be like, okay, like I'm not, I'm not in my parents' basement anymore. I, <laughs> all the work, like I'm here. This is crazy. Did, did you have that I moment? I think just every day on, um, on Avengers was that for me because I literally went straight from my parents' basement to being out in Georgia working on these movies and i mean my my wife and i our financial situation wasn't great for even the first little bit of that because we were just trying to catch up you know and so they right. couldn't really be out with me or they could but like i was staying in a one bedroom dark hotel room you know for like the first couple of months and uh and but going to work every day i was just like i was like wow this is this is crazy this is it and like i just had the the greatest experience on on those movies because nothing could get me down. It was just, this is it. This is where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite action film of all time? And I know I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that question. Like, it doesn't have to be anything you've been in, but like, you know, growing up as a kid watching movies now, like, what is that action movie that you're like, okay, like that, that was it for me. Uh, you know, there's so many subgenres of awesome action movies because, like, uh, there's like Jackie Chan and like Operation Condor and Police Story, and it's like the action in those is is amazing, and I would say some of my favorite action. Uh, but then there's like action movies like Terminator 2, which is just a classic. Like, I don't know, there's just so many different styles of action movies. It's like asking what is your favorite movie, and it's like, well, what genre? I feel like mm -hmm. same faction movies, like what, what, what subgenre, you know? Like I don't know. There's so many, so many to choose from. Yeah, people, people have said it's like choosing your favorite child, and I say it's easier. I can tell you who my favorite kid is, but trying to pick a favorite movie, <laughs> tough. Yeah. Chris, he has six kids. Chris, just so oh, you man. know, like, so it's a yeah. you know, he's got. Yeah. So, so I've got he's a got lot of subgenre yeah. of child too, and I can <laughs> still tell you which one's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so do you good. have like do you have like a goal you've been doing you know kind of this this crossover now where you're doing a lot of stunt work and you're doing acting work um is that the goal is to keep doing both of those things because you love both or is the goal to move more into acting what's what's that look like you know i uh i love acting but i tell people i'm a better stunt man than i am an actor um just because uh, for me and my size and the, the way that I am, like, I just, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm better. I'm more marketable as a stunt person. Um, but also like, if, I think if I were single, um, pursuing acting would be something that I could do. I could do, mm -hmm. uh, but to pursue it the way that I would need to, you know, I, it would just take way too much time away from family. And that's just not something I want to, you know, I want to get into. So I'm really grateful for the opportunities when they come, but I'm also not, you know, looking for them. You know, I'm not seeking them out. Nice. Do you have a, a stunt that was the hardest to achieve? Is there one that sticks in your mind of it was particularly difficult? Uh, you know, people ask that a lot. Uh, and, you know, the, the hardest one was my first one. And hmm. it wasn't because it was the anything other than it was really low budget. Um, I think they paid me like, I can't even remember. I don't even know if they actually paid me. Um, but it was this <laughs> latex Wolverine suit that took about 30 minutes to get on. And uh, it was like rubberized and the eyeballs were out here and they would fog up 
and when you move, they would like they would shift around. So there's no reason that you could see in them anyway. And then there was this like resin, like uh, and like plastic, hard plastic uh, mouthpiece that was also set in that same motion thing. But on the back, it was like all pointy, and so it would move around and cut up my nose and my mouth and oh, stuff. Oh my god! Oh. And it wasn't open wide enough that you could like eat or anything. And uh, and they told me that. They couldn't take me out for lunch or anything um, because it just took too long. And uh, so I was in for 14 <laughs> hours and I couldn't hear anything. Everything wow. just sounded like I was underwater. So it's like they'd ask me something, hey, Chris, hey, Chris, hey, Chris. And someone has to tap me on the shoulder. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then they, they wanted me to do parkour in this thing. And so like uh, I, I'm waiting around for 12 hours and then they finally call me up. I'm going crazy. Oh my god! They finally called me up to do my stunt, and it's like I have to do this whole parkour line that they've set up for me. I've had no chance to look at it, and uh, and I'm completely blind. I can hardly breathe in there, and I'm like just I haven't had no water, no food, and so I'm stumbling around, and they're all like looking at me like, "We hired this guy, all right, whatever." <laughs> and uh, like 14 hours of that, and then when I got out of it, I was like. I was like so anxious. I was like on the verge of a breakdown that night because I had to go home uh, the next day and then come back and put on the costume again. I was like, I'm not doing it. I just can't do it. So I went home. I came back. I slept on it enough that I was like, all right, I can do it. But come lunchtime, I was like, <laughs> I ripped it off myself. I was like, screw you guys. Put it back on, you know? <laughs> so that, that sounds so miserable. It was awful. Yeah, like, and speaking <laughs> of that, like, let's kind of go through a day. So you're speaking there, of misery, you're let's yeah. dig deeper into that. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what it is to be on the set of a movie. I don't think people understand. Yeah, like, people see movies. They'll go to a movie theater. They'll see a movie, and then they'll see people on a red carpet for an award show. They don't see yeah. like what it takes to make the movie. So if you've never been on a film set before, like I've been on film sets where I sat for twelve hours and didn't shoot anything and then you'd have mm -hmm. to come back the next day and you sit on a film set and then you might finally be in something so i'd rather be in production than being on the other side of it because at least in the production part you're busy all day yeah. long you have stuff to do so as a stuntman because you do have to kind of stay warm stay limber stay aware stay fed because you have to be alert the things that you're doing are very physical kind of walk us through like a day on the set of infinity war like you show up and what happens like from beginning to end like can you well, kind of explain well infinity war uh, it was a different different beast altogether i mean they had uh, they had an infinitely deep uh, set of pockets to just throw money at any problem, right? Um, in our, uh, the, the stunt team, basically, we were on stage nine. It was this empty sound stage, and it was basically all ours. We had our pads staged there. We had everything staged there. And basically, it was just, we would do busy work. You know, every now and then they would come in and like, hey, they, uh, they saw this fight scene. Uh, they want this changed. And then we would, we would redo it and we redid every single fight scene over and over and over and over and over and over again for a year. That's it. That's what we did. Um, and you know, we would sit around sometimes cause we knew what we were doing was just busy work and <laughs> it was going to get approved. Uh, but <laughs> for the most part, we were just, we were just dinking around with fight choreo and, you know, wire gags and trying to refine the whole thing. And so it was, it's a different beast cause usually on a set, you know, I tell my wife, it's like you can tell it was, if it was a good day on set, like that I was working a lot or if it was a bad day by looking at my phone battery. And mm. uh, my phone battery is, is dead more often than not when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time you're on a set and you've got, you know, you're, you're in full costume. There's a scene that you're going to shoot over here. You've got Robert Downey Jr. Over here, you've got what Benedict Cumberbatch, like you're there. And I mean, do, do, is it go through your mind? Like, what if I mess up? Like, what, is that like, I, are you in the nervousness part of that? I or are you barely had concentrating time for that. on? Yeah. I barely had okay. time for that because they're like, Hey, uh, we need to get you in costume. I was like, okay, I didn't know I was working today. I go in, I get, <laughs> I get in costume and I, I go to the, the sound stage, and then I'm at the base of the sound stage. The camera's getting all set up or whatever. And then uh, a PA comes over and he hands me um, some sides and he's like, Hey, here's your lines. Have you, has anyone given those to you yet? And I was like, I have lines? 
<laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah. You should probably get looking at those. And I'm like looking at them, and I have like <laughs> at least at least a paragraph on each page, and there's like three or four pages, and I'm like, oh no. <gasps> I'm like, okay, sure. And so I'm sitting there like trying to read them, trying to read them. I'm not even paying attention to who the other characters are. I have no idea. Nobody's told me what I'm doing. It was like, all right, hey, uh, hey, Ron, I'll get up here. And uh, they they bring me up. They sit me in front of camera. You know, they put me on my marks. And I'm sitting there. I'm still trying to read. I'm still trying to read. All of a sudden, this figure comes up next to me. They put him on his marks and put this other figure on the other marks. And I kind of noticed it's like um, it's Doctor Strange and and some dude in a sweatsuit. And I'm not really paying attention. They're probably stunt people anyway. And then, uh, and then I look up, and uh, and you know, this guy is looking at me. He's like, "Hey, I'm Robert." And I'm like, "Whoa, hey, I know who you are." <laughs> You're like, I know who you are, man. I don't know. Who you are. And then um, I'm awesome. like, "Hey, I'm Benedict." And I'm like, "Why do you guys even introduce yourself?" You know. Uh, <laughs> and so basically, they were filming over my shoulder mind. at their their stuff and they were really cool about it um but yeah like that's everybody on that set was so cool like i remember the first time i met uh uh joe russo i had no idea who he was um mm -hmm. i mean i'm brand new to this larger industry or whatever i didn't even think to look up the director or whatever i'm on stage <laughs> i'm sitting there and i'm i'm standing next to this guy and he has like these cool shoes on i'm like hey those are cool shoes and we started talking about his shoes and then somebody calls him up onto the set and my boss comes over, he's like, hey, I see you uh, met Joe Russo. And I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> But everybody was just so down to earth, like it didn't even, didn't even feel like a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'd, I'd heard stories that that was like a big family on the production yeah. team of that, of that movie. It really was. So I heard, and this is just a rumor, but maybe um, you can help me out. I heard that um, Robert Downey Jr. hides food food like around the set and he just kind of eats know, throughout actually. the day <laughs> so you never like pull out like a pull out a sandwich from like I don't know why he would hide it he, it. he, he does, could literally like just a... like snap and a sandwich appears in his hand you know <laughs> <laughs> like muggles like I, me have I've to read... hide stuff he doesn't have to hide he's, it, he's got a sandwich guy yeah this goes back to the original Avengers movie, right, Val, where he supposedly like that scene where he's eating the blueberries and he's talking about science stuff. I don't know. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. But like he like supposedly he just grabbed that from one of his hiding spots <laughs> and then just started doing that and they just kept it in the film. Yeah. Like that's, that's the cool. rumor. Yeah. Yeah. I Well, I've I read a few that. articles and I saw a picture of him like sitting where there's this whole stuff like Wakanda around him and he like pulls out a sandwich because he just like goes beforehand and like just hides food um and so i'm like i'm like i need to do that but i'm at home so i mean if that's here i don't doubt it do you have a hard time finding food at home val do you like you no know? there is not a problem that's, I, 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 I don't have a problem either I, like i know right where it's at you know i'm so. working on my covid 20 right now i'm down to my COVID-15. I, I gained the COVID-20. I've been back at the gym every day for 16 days. Awesome. And I'm like so happy to be back at the gym. I know some people can work out at home. Um, it doesn't work for me because I'll be working out and then there's the fridge and then I'll work out again and then there's the fridge. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a vicious cycle of movie watching, eating and trying to work out at home. So <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm okay. In... So, out of all the Marvel yeah, anyway. movies, and we won't <laughs> go ahead, Val. Out of all the Marvel movies, out of all the Marvel movies that you've made, and we won't tell anybody this answer. Um, which one was your favorite to be a part of? <laughs> we won't tell anybody this answer, but you are on the air right now, so that's fine. You are. Uh, well, You're among friends. You're among my friends. It's to work okay. On, obviously, was uh, Infinity War. Um, it was just my first big movie and it was just a big family and I loved it. But my favorite that I was a part of to actually watch is Ragnarok. And I only worked on it for like not even a week on reshoots or whatever. Uh, but that's just, that's one of my favorites. Oh, it's Taika Waititi is one of my favorite movie. directors. He's so great. Does he it's have a, cool shoes too? Movie. I don't oh, know yeah. if I met Taika. I think oh. we were second unit. Um, hmm. stuff, yeah. Okay. 
I'm sure he does. Say, have if you've cool seen shoes. any of his it's stuff on Disney Plus, he always has cool shoes on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of the Mandalorian stuff. He always has cool shoes on. So uh, you, you've yeah. conquered Marvel. It is like Star Wars next? Is that your uh, trifecta right there? Uh, you know, Rocky, I got a, I got a call from Mandalorian um, because Sam Hargrave uh, was is was directing second unit on season two and uh, called me to come out and do it. Uh, but uh, sadly, I was busy because that was oh, man. awesome. Although I guarantee what he wanted me for was to put a Wookiee costume on me and make me <laughs> walk around the hot sun all day. So, and I mean, he's not even going to use it. He just wanted yeah. to get you in a Wookiee suit. Yeah, it's it's no Wolverine suit, but I'm sure it'd be fun. You yeah. know. I mean, how is that though to like have to turn down such a great opportunity because you're busy working you know, that, on something else? Um, that is never never lost on me because I mean, every time that happens, I just first of all, I remember when I would have killed for a call like that. And then I think about all the other people, like some people that are like coming up or that are, you know, in different places and, and you know, they would still kill for a call like that. And so it's like, it's just never, it's never lost on me that like how, how far I've come and how, how blessed I am. Like, it's just amazing. So I think about that every time that happens and it kills my heart too. Every time I have to turn something down, because I'm like, oh man. That seems like a fun crew to be with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, that is, that's a huge blessing and, and fortunate uh, happenstance to be in that you can turn down stuff like that. That's incredible. That's great, yeah. man. That's so awesome. can you tell us anything about Jurassic World? Can you tell us anything about what's... <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. The dinosaurs, dinosaurs are really crap. crap. <laughs> This is, this is the thing about the Jurassic Park movies. And it the original Jurassic Park was number one at the box office last weekend, 27 years after it originally went out and made half a million dollars. Like, people love this up. franchise. Yeah, I mean, right. You're right. part of three. You're a part of three big franchise. You know, you've got Rocky, you've got Marvel, and then you've got Jurassic Park. This is so cool. Um, but, I mean, I'm pretty sure what happens in Jurassic Park movies is – that someone decides that they need to mess with science. And then somebody else says, I think this is a really good idea. And then there's a team of people that have to save the people that are stupid. Well, spoilers. That's, that's an interesting theory. I can't say one way or the other. <laughs> uh, listen, when, when I can Tom either confirm Holland, nor deny. Yeah. When Tom Holland leaked stuff, you know, Marvel's like, oh my God, stop that. You know, if I leak stuff, I don't get a yeah. call, you know? No, I don't yeah. want you to I just don't, I don't want you to leak it. <laughs> I don't want you to leak anything. Yeah. I'm just so happy that you had time to take out of your day today because you you should be working. You're in where are you? You're in like Australia or something? Uh, I'm in London Europe. right now, yeah. London. You're in close. London? So close. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I thought Australia. I don't know. I, I, I wish don't know. Anyway, so you're in London. Australia would be cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you're in a hotel room in London. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for like taking time out of your day to talk with us little people in Utah um, about, you know, stunt people. Uh, do you think that it's kind of a lost thing that, that people are looking to go into stunt work? Or do you think with all of these new action movies, it's been a resurgence of people wanting uh, to get I into I honestly stunt see a a lot more people, maybe just because I'm in it, but I, I, I feel like the interest to become a stunt person um, has found like a whole wider audience lately. Mm -hmm. I think before it was kind of this niche thing, but now I feel like a lot more people are like, yeah, Ninja Warrior, yeah, stunt work, yeah, let's do it. You know, I, I feel like a lot more people are interested in those kind of things, which I think is rad. Okay. Yeah. So very, very cool. And you guys do not get enough credit for what you do again. Oh, yeah. You know, I was looking at the three movies that you were nominated for, you got, you did get an award um, with 200 other people <laughs> for um, Infinity War, which is just crazy, you know, and the, the, the cast of Watchmen, you know, of stunt people that were nominated was like, you know, 15. And then you get to Endgame and, you know, you're 200 and something people. So it's so different on, on a daily basis for you. What a fun job to have. 
like yeah. it just be changing all the time. That is so cool. It was, it was quite, it's been, uh, it's been great. It's been a good ride. <laughs> it's, it's been okay. It's been all right. Okay. <laughs> Chris, it has been so fun to have you on the show. We really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any feedback for the show, you can leave it in the comments below the, the video, or you can email it to us, especially if there's something that Tracy said that you disagreed with. You can send that to <laughs> podcastmoviesatmakeus.com. Uh, we really appreciate everybody stopping and, and taking some time to watch this. Um, and until next time, we won't see you at the movies. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, dude.